On this video we're going to talk about feedback or getting information on your model railway back to a control panel or a mimic panel somewhere else. The core of your feedback system is this module here, the feedback module, and it allows you to connect up to 24 sensors through these connectors here and put this information back through the network to your multi-panel. The feedback system can manage up to 192 feedback channels through up to eight of these modules all connected around your layout. This is the sensor for DCC track occupancy and it will allow you to detect when a train is on the track and allow you to illuminate a road on your control panel, your mimic panel, to show you that that section is occupied. And this is the sensor for point position indicator. Again at this point it's for DCC and it will allow you to detect the actual measured position of a set of points or turnouts on your layout. The sensors connect to the feedback module using these supplied cables. There are Molex on either end, it's a two conductor cable. And the sensors are marked so it says GND at the bottom and the signal at the top. GND and signal. So what you do, you plug your sensor cable in and connect the other end with the ground lead down to the channel you wish to use. So right now I've connected this uh, occupancy detector to feedback channel 1 or I could connect it to channel 13 and plug in a point position indicator. To use the feedback module you would connect a 12 volt regulated power source here so it will take 12 volts in and sensors connect through these bottom pins along the bottom here so there's 24 channels here. These are the network connections and there's two so you can daisy chain this with all the other things on the network to connect. And this also has the option of supplying 5 volts power out to power other powered sensors that we haven't yet finished developing. There's also a monitoring port here that you can connect an LED expansion port to. So if you're testing sensors or while installing, instead of having to wander back to your mimic panel to see if it's working, you can plug the expansion board in here directly and this will allow you to check that the sensor circuit is operating as you would expect. I've connected an external power source now so you can see the feedback module working. There's a flashing light to indicate that the processor is running. There's two buttons on here labelled up and down and these set the board address. The default is 1, so it will give you um, channels 1 to 24. If I change the address by increasing it, you'll get two flashes. Now I've set the range, so instead of being 1 to 24, it's now 25 to 48, and so on. And that's how you achieve the maximum 192 sensors. Let's go back to the default address 1. Everything I'm going to show you in this video can be found in the feedback module user guide including how to wire it up and how to connect various components to it. It also breaks down all of the connections so everything I'm saying now can be read here and it also explains how to set the address on the various boards. Either sensors or switches can be connected to this. So if you wanted to, for example, connect a micro switch, then this shows you how you would wire that up. So you have the uh, signal here and the ground and the switch goes between the two and if you close the switch you operate the sensor circuit. For block occupancy there's a diagram here showing you how to hook this up. So it shows that the block occupancy detector sits in series with any one of the DCC bus feeds. The sensor will introduce a loss of about 1 to 1.2 volts. It doesn't matter which way round these go, and it doesn't matter which side of the DCC cable you use, it just has to be in series somewhere. Here are two multi-panel LED expansion boards. This is the latest version that will drive two LEDs per channel, and this is the version 1 that drove a single LED per channel. And what I'm going to do is connect one of these boards to the monitor bus so we can see what's happening. Because the early version came with the option of a plug-in LED board, I'm going to use this because it will be easier 
to demonstrate the board functioning with this on. So what I'll do, I will take some of the power using the power out connector here and I'll plug this in to the power in connector and I'll take a data cable and I will connect where it says to multi-panel here. I will now plug this in observing polarity to the LED monitor socket. And with everything connected, I can now restart the system and you can see that this is now connected and if we look inside you can see the green power light is on so I'm now connected these 24 LED channels to that monitor output. What this means is that I can see all of these circuits now illustrated on here. These are open collector inputs which means that I generate 5 volts on the top and I have a ground at the bottom so if I were to short them out by putting a screwdriver across the terminals you can see channel 1 has illuminated. Now do not connect anything directly to these other than a sensor and the reason for that is that all of the sensors are fully opto isolated between what they're detecting and this board. So the circuits are completely isolated making sure that uh, nothing goes terribly wrong. This is my DCC module test panel and it's connected to my NCE power cab. This means I can generate a DCC signal on this track here which is now live and I'm going to use this to pass a signal here to detect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of the crocodile clips and I'm just going to attach it from the lower track to the lower track. So I've now connected this rail to this rail. I'll now use this module, the DCC occupancy module and I will connect one side of it to the top rail and the other connector to this top rail. So I've now placed this sensor in series with the feed to this rail here. That's exactly how it's illustrated in the documentation here where I have this in series with the feed. The feed here is this track and it's feeding through the sensor, direction does not matter, lead does not matter to this block. I'll take one of these cables, plug the black into the bottom and connect the black here also onto the bottom and I'll connect it to channel 1. So I've now connected this sensor to channel 1. It's so sensitive that if I lick my fingers and touch the track you can see the occupancy LED has illuminated so I'm generating feedback information and that sensor is working. Press, you can see it working let go and it stops. So that is occupancy detection for um, a single block. The point position indicator is essentially a voltage detector so if it's detecting voltage then it will indicate uh, and send the signal out here. So if I connect again the detector to the feedback module Let's connect this to channel number 13. This is now hooked up. So if I introduce a DCC signal to the detection side, you can see LED 13 is on and now it's off. So what we need is a way of hooking this up to a set of points so that we can detect which way they are turned. There are several ways to connect the point position indicator to your points. In my opinion, the best way is to attach one of the sensor leads to the closure rail here and the other to one of the stock rails. That way, irrespective of the position of your points, it will always give you a correct reading. Another slightly more simple method is to connect it to your frog switch. But obviously at this point, it's measuring how the frog switch is set not the actual points themselves. So if somebody was to walk up to your layout and move the points over by hand, it wouldn't correctly register it. This method does. So I have my leads here and I'm going to connect the sensor input 
like so. The black lead comes onto the closure rail here and when the blade touches the stock rail it forms a circuit so I'm effectively picking up this rail and also the signal from this rail and when the circuit is open or the blades are moved straight ahead this circuit is opened now and there's no voltage here so it detects that the blade is set for straight ahead so let's introduce a DCC signal I'll clip on one lead here and one lead here so I now have live DCC on the rails and the blades are set for straight through no activation nothing indicated if I hold the points and push the blade over you'll see now that channel 13 has illuminated on the feedback and it's measuring the voltage so you can see that working move it back of course the only points I have don't have a center spring so I'm having to hold it by hand push it again and I'm detecting pull it back and I've released it and this information is also in the feedback module user guide here so there's a diagram showing exactly what I've just demonstrated with the sensor here and how I've connected it to the closure rail and the other the other side of the circuit is connected to a stock rail if you want to use the frog method which is slightly easier to hook up then that is also illustrated on this diagram in the guide as well now we've seen the feedback module working we don't need this test board anymore so I can remove it it's just a neat little trick if you're setting up your layout and you want instant feedback as to whether your circuit's working or not so with that board on it allows you to to see straight away so the point of this is that the feedback modules are installed around your layout all sharing the same wiring network that's controlling your points your gates barriers doors whatever you're animating on your layout and using that same network it's also transmitting data back to the multi-panel on how the points or blocks are occupied so I've now connected the network to the multi-panel and I'm going to bring on the LED test board again and I'm going to connect it now to the multi-panel feedback bus there's the data connection and I will use some power from here to connect this so if I throw the points channel 13 has illuminated release it and it's set for straight through this time this circuit is being driven from the multi-panel so this could be tens of meters away from this board that is somewhere on my layout here's a little teaser of what I've set up for demonstration I have track with two sets of points and I've broken this into four sections section one section two section three section four and with each section I've added a block detector so there's one here section two block two is here three and four and if I move a train or touch it with wet fingers anywhere on this then the panel will illuminate I've used solenoids to drive the points because I've added a pair of point position indicators as well and these are measuring through the closure rail and the blade just as I showed you in the video earlier so if this is on and active and I move a set of points then the panel will update to display correctly how this is set and if you move it by hand the panel should be able to display how that's set as well I have the feedback module here and I've connected six channels to it one two three four five and six though this can drive 24 channels as it sits and I've also added a solenoid driver here this is a six-way solenoid driver and I've connected solenoids one and two to it all of the electronics here and the detectors are driven through this 12 volt battery here and this powers the circuit and at this point here I have a DCC signal input which I can put a DCC signal on the track ready to run stock so between this 
and the Mimic panel, I have a single network cable connecting here. And where, whether I connect it at this point or this point doesn't matter. Uh, it will bring all of this information onto my Mimic panel and allow my Mimic panel to operate the solenoids using the single cable. The next video will cover the wiring of the Mimic panel for this. So you'll be able to see me hook it all up and connect this to this test layout and you'll be able to see it all operating. Thanks for watching.